Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. Hello and welcome <laughs> to a late night large stripped, flogged and staked down in a field for the crows. Witness to the murder is me, Aaron Bliss, and the toad beneath the harrow is Mike Large. Hi. How are we growing tonight, Mike? Oh, dirty, as usual. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, you haven't contracted COVID, presumably? No, not yet. No. But yeah, that's fine. It's I haven't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you haven't. Uh, yeah, this week's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because uh, we've, got, we've we've had some big news this week. Finally, we we don't yeah, have. To have. About, yeah, we I'm don't. I'm not happy about it. I, I'm not happy at all. I'd never be happy about something like this. But you we uh, normally we 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 uh, do the show, and we're normally talking about some trifling little change in lockdown procedures in the northeast, mm -hmm. or you know, Boris Johnson said something contradictory, or. Matt Hancock's made a boob, whatever. And this week, wow. So, of course, the huge news this week is that it was confirmed by the White House that the man himself, the president who has in the past claimed many times that COVID-19 was a hoax uh, perpetrated by the Democrats, then he claimed it was created in a lab by the Chinese, and he's consistently said that it's not a problem. It's soon going to be over. People shouldn't worry about it. And Donald Trump has contracted coronavirus, as well as his uh, as well as his wife. So, what are your first thoughts on this bombshell, Mike? <laughs> uh, uh, first thoughts probably much the same as most people's calm as a bitch um, um it's an interesting one isn't it the only thing i would say mm -hmm. is, you know oh, would it give him some humility would he be a bit more humble would he be you know kind of brought down to earth and kind of ah, this is a bit of a wake-up call is hello you know this is this this is a thing um maybe but I, we know, we know, we know him better than that, don't we? <laughs> but it'll be, um, you know, when he recovers and, you know, hope he does and stuff. He's got family just because he's a massive cunt um, doesn't mean, you know. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, you know, so cool. But when he does, it will be, see, told you, nothing to worry about. I was fine. Yeah. That's okay. No, I think I think you I think you're fairly close to the mark. <clears throat> it's interesting that you were the first person to to call him out there. I got to get in there first. Yeah, get the first shot in. It's interesting though, Mike, because uh, we've generally avoided talking about him too much because obviously this is meant to be uh, relating to the situation in the UK. But obviously this is a huge deal, and it will affect the UK as well because, of course, the presidential election is what less than a month away now that that was that was the interesting thing was the timing the fact that this has happened like just after that yeah before i go on with that mike did you see the first presidential debate at all <laughs> oh um i didn't i didn't I've, I've seen snippets i've seen snippets um since thought I'd see a bit of what the hoo-ha was about and my god it was Fucking worse imagine. than you could ever have imagined what I mean I, I just lost for words lost for words I mean this is this is possibly the most powerful country in the world um in more in in a number of ways so you mean combine the fact that obviously they're, they're physically big they have big population um economy wise they're huge 
it's just this is such a one of if not the most important position in the world all things considered um certainly for the way that, that we operate these days and that that is the level of i mean just what the fuck <laughs> you know what, I mean? what? Is, is that not all that was going through your head the whole time um you know you know, when you, you know those nights when you're in a pub right and you yeah oh, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe maybe you're having a good night and uh you know you're larking around with your mates playing pool whatever uh, yeah, and banter, yeah and you go up to the bar because it's it's your round yeah and when you're at the bar there's a guy next to you that you catch out the corner of your eye who's kind of sort of shaking and just looking like they're going to fall off their bar stool at any time yeah he's had a good night yeah and you and you tr and you try and avoid catching his eye because you just want your drinks you want to get back to the table and he'll, he'll suddenly grab your arm and then he'll be like oh all right mate and then he'll just start talking gibberish usually very slowly and loud like spitting right in your face about something probably that's really not very interesting but he'll hold you in place uh you know where he doesn't even realize how hard he's holding you he'll hold you in place and he'll be like basically gobbing all over you talking about some complete nonsense that doesn't mean anything and you have to just you just have to nod along and smile because you don't want him to like suddenly lose his cool and glass you or something so you're like yeah 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 and you're pretending to be his friend but all that's screaming in your head is please get me out of this situation like right now that reminds me of that debate particularly <laughs> trump it was like you were trapped in a situation that was cringy unpleasant and all consuming and all you could think about was how great it was going to be when you were outside of that situation i don't know was that was that a decent analogy that's kind of what struck me yeah i mean i can certainly see um where you're coming from on that one yeah it just particularly the honestly whole, i think it's cool. so i mean bear with me here so you know using that analogy again so you know the guy that grabs you at the bar it's he's almost always the guy who's setting the world to rights isn't he so when he's busy like showering you with his saliva it's usually about something he's seen wrong with the world or the pub even and he'll be like he'll be bending your ear about this fucking person has no respect or you know they didn't used to do shit like this and it's all gone to the dogs and exactly it's all it's all everything shit and this guy knows how it got shit and if they just listen to him it'd be great and um that that's like how trump talks that's his whole oratorical style do you know what i mean so there's yeah. no there's no subtlety it's just like shouting at people this is wrong and i know why it's wrong and i'm gonna make it right and even though i've been the president for four years and i promised to make america great again it's still really shit but you should definitely give me a second term because i'll definitely build that wall and it's definitely going to get great now um i don't know that's one of the many fascinating things about trump if you can call like someone who's such an obvious um narcissist pathological liar devoid of any kind of basic intellect but he is fascinating in a way to study in the sense that like there's a lot of people who do really like him and they do hang on his every word so clearly there's something there's something that connects with people but yeah that i mean that debate was um <laughs> was really really bad you not think it's it maybe it's the lack of intellect that connects with yes i no, i think you're onto something do you know what i read which i thought was very perceptive and i never considered it myself uh, right. i read in an article that someone had said about trump that he embodies what poor people think they would do if they were rich 
and 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 what they said was they gave the example of Trump's life, which is married a model, slaps his name all over gaudy buildings, all over big cities, uh, brags about his wealth all the time, surrounds himself with people who just agree with him, um, you know, brags about how much money he's worth all the time, as if like. Um, he's constantly trying to prove how much better he is than everyone. So it's really interesting. So so that kind of gave it a little insight into why maybe the more, let's say, intellectually challenged. Because when we talk about the poor, we're not talking about another species. You know, me and you technically are part of the poor. We're just less poor than the very poorest. Um, but when we talk about the poor, we're talking about all of us, really, the working classes. And Trump seems to appeal to you know, a section of, I mean, some of them are, are incredibly unpleasant because, you know, you're talking about people who are really bigoted and have a lot of hate in them. But you're also talking to intellectually challenged people. And like you say, he seems to represent them because he's intellectually challenged. And he, and as an intellectually challenged person, he reacts to being rich the way that they expect they would. So do you know what I mean? Because that, that made sense to me. I was like, oh, right, okay, so he's a stupid person's idea of a rich person. No, I get that. I do get that a lot. And that's kind of you know, kind of what I was saying. You know, yeah. Maybe that's the, that's the common kind of thing. But, I mean, one thing that does strike me, and it, it, it kind of relates to our um, – something we said a couple of shows back mm -hmm. – uh, about you know how the government make a decision or they say something you think no that can't be right no i'm missing something here because they must know something i don't yeah it kind of relates to that i mean can no i know this is controversial but can he is he uh, can he be that stupid <laughs> Can he be that? Because I mean, prick or not, he, he. I know what you're saying. Yeah, he, he, he became, came out. He became the president of the United States. Yeah, he's he's come out with, and like you say, he he's come out with statements that. You know, if if one of your mates, if one of your mates came out with it, you'd you'd mercilessly take the piss out of him the rest of his life. Yeah. And yet he's the most powerful man in the in the developed world. There's got yeah, there's got to be some. Uh, again, there's got to be something that we're missing. He can't be that. Some something something somewhere he's got something. I don't know what it is, but he's got something because you can't you don't become the president of the United States. I, I can't. Mean, yeah i mean i would probably suggest and i know it's very it's very on vogue it's very um it's very the thing at the moment to say like a prime minister or a president it, oh it's all about their advisor their advisor is the one pulling the strings but i think with trump it makes a lot of sense that if you think about steve bannon to me he's he seems to be the key figure so Steve Bannon was a big part of getting Trump elected. And if you look at what Steve Bannon's record is, it's very much he he analyzes sections of the working class that have been completely abandoned by the modern economic system. And he'll look into what their basically their worst fears and prejudices are. And he'll, you know, he'll play them like puppets. That that's his that's what he does. Um, that's how he got Trump in power. You know, he he reached out to the conspiracy theory groups. He reached out to the racists. He reached out to um, e even some decent people, you know, but he played on their fears. He plays on their base emotions. And he probably did coaching with Trump. I'm sure he did. Now, we, we know what Trump's like. like we, we've seen how Trump reacts to criticism. You've seen how he reacts to to information that contradicts his own perspective of himself which is that he's like a god on earth and if anyone kind of contradicts that that sort of impression he has of himself he'll fire them and then he'll just try to discredit them and smear them whereas with bannon it may be because because whatever again bannon like you said with trump is a cunt but at the same time he, he's clearly a very smart cunt so he knows what he's doing 
he knows the puppet strings he's pulling and maybe he he saw trump quite obviously for what he was and he thought right how am i going to get through to this guy about what he needs to do and he probably coached him but he talked to him in a way that made it sound like trump was coming up with all the ideas yeah because that's the way i can yeah isn't it? Yeah, you should do this. That's a great idea. Well done, Donald. <laughs> yeah, basically, I, I honestly, I think that must have been what it was like because that's the only way I can imagine anything ever getting through to Trump is to make him think that he had the idea. And oh my God, you're so smart. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't see. Yeah, I mean, in that respect, maybe he might be all right to manipulate, but he doesn't, he doesn't seem the easiest person in the world because he's quite stubborn and belligerent, isn't he? He's, yeah uh he i mean if you look at if you look at the comments that have been made by people who previously worked with him they've they've often said stuff like uh he can't focus on reading anything that's more than a couple of lines uh he he struggles with information that isn't like pumped up by fox news you know even when you even when you brief him on stuff he he struggles unless you can kind of put it in a format where it plays to to what he wants to say anyway so there's, yeah. you know, these are people who've worked for him and actually got on with him for a certain period in time. And then they kind of, they get out of there and they're just like, this guy, <laughs> it's just, but anyway, returning to the specifics yeah. of this show, which is that Trump has COVID. Have you seen the, I mean, have you seen the contra, uh, the, you know, the, the different, differing news reports on, on how this is going? Because no, no. We know how Trump wants it to seem because he seems to have continually be working on getting out this idea that, like you said, Trump is probably, even when he's sick, he's probably already thinking, how am I going to turn this to my advantage? And we know what it's going to be. If he recovers, it will be either I'm Trump, nothing beats me because I'm like the best guy for president. Um, because I'm invincible, or alternatively, it'll be see what I mean. I told you it wasn't anything to work, just a bit of bit of flu, bit of flu, no problem at all. And he'll 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 play to his conspiracy theorist mates and say, yeah, it's not a big problem. But from what I was reading, Mike, um, I, some of the because he, obviously he's been in hospital and still is in hospital. Claim claims he'll be out. I don't know whether he claimed he was going to be out today or next Monday. Because obviously we should say that taking the president to hospital is a precaution that America would always make. Like if, even if it wasn't Trump, if it was someone as fit as, say, Obama, they'd take him to hospital because the president gets five-star treatment because you have to make sure your figurehead is 100% fit and healthy. So him going to hospital wasn't necessarily a giveaway that, oh my God, this is so serious. But I have seen some of the drugs that he's been on, that he's been administered. And some health professionals have said that um, some of those are like steroid based drugs and you don't give those to people as a precaution. You know, they are potent drugs. They're used for uh, aggressively tackling conditions. So some medical professionals uh, seem to be suggesting that Trump is trying to create this illusion that he's not been very sick. When in fact, you know he is in a high risk group we know he's in a high risk group he's in his 70s and he's overweight so he's going to be potentially a lot worse affected than the most people and the drugs that he seems to be on the medical practitioners seem to say that you know it sounds like he's been hit quite hard i'm not saying obviously he's a danger of death or anything but you know it's kind of between the two between the two extremes trump trying to claim he's hardly been infected at all uh, affected at all compared to like he's at death's door i think it's closer to the death door thing than trump would have you believe um for obvious reasons so that was interesting mm. so what we do know is that that trump has been hospitalized and he is uh, being administered drugs that are usually used for treating conditions like serious conditions it's not just stuff that's a precautionary measure and of course the Trump story wouldn't be complete, Mike, without talking about. So it was one of the rare occasions when I think you would argue that even people who hated him and let's be fair, he is a fascist and you should punch fascists in the face. You should never give them any respect. 
But at the same time, we're not fascists, therefore we don't wish for people to die or wish for people to suffer. But when he's... So he's contracted the disease. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have said but, because that wasn't part of what I was saying. What I meant was we felt sympathy on a human level. Is, aside from being aside from being a cunt, you don't want to see a human being suffer. So we all kind of thought, this is shit. If anyone deserves to get COVID, it's him. But hopefully he doesn't suffer too much. Hopefully he just gets a kick in the ass and it you know, teaches him to kind of not play around with other people's health so much. And that lasted for like a day or two. But did you see in the news the fact that it only takes Trump a couple of days to just ruin any goodwill that anyone might have towards him by doing something completely imbecilic? Did you see this? No. What's this? Right. So was it yesterday you think he did this? So he's been in hospital and he ordered the Secret Service to drive him outside the hospital where his cult fans were waiting to wave to him and like scream his name and, and like say how much they were they were rooting for him right, right. Now, bear, bear in mind that i mean in fact it would be interesting if i can find the um i'll try and find the uh, the comments um about it because it's a really interesting story. So basically, like we said, there was there was empathy for Trump. We all we all sort of thought, you know, maybe this isn't, um, you know, this is this is an ideal. We don't want people to suffer, and even though he's a complete imbecile, this is harsh, and let's hope he gets better soon. And and that lasted so little time, and then he does this drive by. Now, some medical professionals um, in America have have said have described it as insanity now one of the tweets right from a medical professional in america read every single person in that vehicle during that completely unnecessary presidential drive-by just now has to be quarantined for 14 days they may get sick and they may die for political theater commanded by trump to put their lives at unnecessary risk for theater this is insanity and he backed it up with a second tweet, I believe, saying that presidential SUV, sports utility vehicle that they were driving in, is not only bulletproof, but hermetically sealed against chemical attack. The risk of COVID-19 transmission inside that vehicle is as high as it gets outside of medical procedures. The irresponsibility is astounding. My thoughts are with the Secret Service forced to play. So, opinions on that, Mike? What did so right? So Trump's in hospital. Yeah. Uh, yeah, presumably pretty ill. Uh, wants to make out he's less ill than he is. Oh, this, this will make sense. Um, that that yeah, that logic follows. That's um, orders the Secret Service to take him where well this is the thing i was a bit uncertain about because i thought he was already in the hospital i don't know whether he traveled from inside the hospital and like did a circuit or whether he traveled from another hospital oh, oh. but it was like yeah it was it was like it was just like a circuit outside this hospital is that the... right because if that's if that is so look look at me i'm in a car you can't even fucking aren't they backed out windows you can't even see them anyway, can you no no I, I saw pictures the the windows weren't tinted you could see him through the window he was where he was actually wearing a face mask oh that's good of him yeah that's good of him to wear a face mask when he's infected with covid so it, what just cut that can't be right can it what he's just come out and gone look hi i'm alive i'm fine Loop round, drive back in into hospital, pump it full of drugs. What what it what it that says? Can't... What what it says? So the, the the article the article basically the first line says Donald Trump drew immediate rebuke from doctors on Sunday afternoon for an in inverted commas insane surprise drive by visit. 
to supporters outside the Walter Reed Military Medical Center, where the president is being treated for an infection of COVID-19. At least two other people, probably Secret Service agents, wearing respirators and eye protection, were seen in the video accompanying Trump, who was also masked during the short drive. So yeah, that, that was what happened. So all I can think of is he was being treated and then he did a drive by at the facility, just doing a circuit around the facility he's being treated at to see his fans. <laughs> Do you what? see what I mean? That it takes him, it. it takes him less than 24, 48 hours from people who were his sworn enemies thinking, okay, now I've got sympathy for him. I hope he pulls through. And then within 24 or 48 hours, he just does something so blockbustingly stupid and irresponsible and putting other people's lives at risk again, that you lose all sympathy instantly. I don't understand. There's no, it's not like, it's not like, that. It, what what are you doing you thick twat there's no, there's no burning need for him to it's not like the country was falling apart oh, we need to see the president's okay like i mean not i'm not saying it's not falling apart I mean, <laughs> and, yeah and there is a global pandemic so you know things aren't great but yeah. but you know what do you expect when you like fucking elect trump as you a failed as con it. artist in the white house um but yeah. I, it's not that, that you know I, I understand there may actually at some point there may even be a situation whereby do you know what we do we need to get this man out we need to show people that he's okay because otherwise you know things are we you know there might be a scenario in which that is appropriate or the risk outweigh do you know what i mean but yeah no i yeah i can see what you mean yeah I, but i do not believe for one second that now is that time uh, what does he think does he does he think is that it's hard to say that important because he is technically the president yeah of the fucking united states do you want a simple so, explanation mike mike do you want a huh? simple explanation no hit me OK, the simple explanation is Trump is extraordinarily vain. Yeah, it's, 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 it's no self-importance. He thinks yeah. I need to get out. They need to see me because otherwise uh, fucking the world's going to collapse because yeah. America will crumble if they think their fearless leader is bedridden and fucked. Yeah, it, but it, that's it. To be honest, it is complete vanity. And um, surely somebody is said to him don't like to think they had yeah don't be a bell end just stay in the hospital bed mate yeah somebody has got to have the fucking cojones just to say mr trump president trump i strongly <laughs> advise against this stay inside it's not necessary no it will not paint you in good light other than the fact that it's you're endangering other people it won't pay, pay you in a good light it just open you up to criticism yes mr trump i know that you don't care but i mean you know you're not doing yourself any favors if you want to get re-elected or maybe he is maybe he thinks does he think that's doing him a favor i, I think he, yeah I, just, think, I think he must do okay otherwise they'll worry about re-electing him oh we can't we can't re-elect him because he's too ill i love donald trump but he's just too ill we can't re we can't re-elect him. <laughs> we don't want to yeah, do that. I I mean we want him to be okay because we love him so much. We don't want to stress him out and burden him with <laughs> presidential duty. Do you know, no, no, no. I'm fine, I'm fine. Your your emperor is alive and kicking. You, Mike, have you heard, you've surely heard the phrase and you you've um, you've kind of said something similar. Uh, you know the phrase you'll never go broke appealing to the lowest common denominator so yeah. do you think it's a way of tr i mean trump has basically that that drive-by effectively was pandering to simpletons 
at its heart, wasn't it really? Because that's what it was. Well, no one with, no one with a brain is going to think, oh, good, I'm glad he came out and yeah. drove around the hospital grounds so people could wave at him. Yeah, and so the Secret Service guys could probably contract COVID themselves. Uh, the people who put their life on the line to prevent it from being shot or poisoned or whatever uh, are deliberately infected with a, with COVID from a stupid, unnecessary stunt by the president. Uh, so there we go. Uh, uh, just one more thing on this story, Mike, because obviously we've ripped into him enough. <laughs> but um, do you mm. want to hear something really interesting developing about that go. story? which I read, that's gone under the radar. Apparently, yeah. his missus, Melania, right? There was a quote from Melania Trump that apparently Trump wanted her to come as well, and she refused because she didn't want to put the Secret Service at risk. Really? Interesting. It, I thought that was very telling. I thought that was a very telling development. I mean... Just chew over that. Is that so, true? Is that... Where, where's that come from? I mean, that it did quote her. It did quote her. I'll, I'll have to dig it out. I, I swear, I, wore it, I saw it in an article and my eyebrow was just... That is a really interesting development. So what we're looking at is the guy who has the most responsibility in the Western world is doing something reckless, irresponsible and putting his own bodyguards at extreme risk and his own wife, who people don't really seem to think a lot of, um, purely no. generally based on the fact that she's married to Donald Trump, actually seems to have the brains in the relationship. When she says something as obvious as, no, I don't think it's a good idea to travel when I'm infected with COVID with people who aren't infected with COVID just so we can do a victory lap around the hospital. I mean, I'm glad that she can see that. I mean, even, I'm going to say even she, that sounds harsh. I don't really know much. What's her background? Wasn't she just a model or something? Mm, I'll have to look into it. I know she she was a model amongst other things, but yeah, I, I don't think she was... I don't know I what mean, her background was. ...particularly is. powerful before. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she's... I, well, she can't be, um, I was going to say brains of Britain, but she's not British. Um, but yeah, I'd, um, but even if she can see that's Yeah. So, that's so there you go. Is, we, we forget, we forget sometimes. That, sorry, Mike, say that again. I said he's punching. She's all right for an older lady. <laughs> I would have expected that from you, Mike. Okay, uh, so so that's enough about old uh, Trumpy Doodle Dandy. Um, hopefully he gets well. Hopefully it kicks his ass as well, so it teaches him a bit of a lesson about being so flippant with people's health. But anyway, I'm sure he'll pull through. Uh, and the other big news story from this week related to coronavirus, bringing it back home, bringing it on home, Mike, is, and this broke today, um, backed up by another horrendously cringy performance from I think the Department of Work and Pensions Minister Therese Coffey made a complete fool out of herself again. Right. The, uh, what is it, the Department of Health or whichever, so I, you know, I forget now because, you know, everything keeps getting abolished and recontracted out and you don't know, you know, you don't know who's handling what. So, the contact tracing app, I think that th this is the thing. Is it the new contract tracing app or is it the one that already existed but failed? Anyway, the bottom line is, uh, again, I'll just read you the opening line of the article, which will tell you how bad this is. Contract tracers are right. scrambling to reach up to 50,000 people who should be self-isolating after ministers were accused of putting lives at risk with a spreadsheet blunder that led to coronavirus cases going unreported. So MPs from across the political spectrum rounded on the health secretary, Matt Hancock, after it emerged that official figures missed 15,841 positive results due to a catastrophic data error. So I'd like to know more about what that data error was. Yeah. So effectively, they 
they've missed tens of thousands of COVID positive people. They've missed that many thousand people from notifying them to, to quarantine. I mean, the whole fucking thing has been an absolute joke, hasn't it? From start to fucking finish. Tracing <laughs> that bollocks. And I say tracing that bollocks. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, fundamentally. But it's been an absolute fucking shambles. I mean, we wouldn't have anything to talk about on our show, would we? If it had actually gone the way that most countries have implemented it. I mean, just no. you think it couldn't get any worse. Do you know what I would love? I would fucking love just for once, right? That we could do a show where <laughs> it was so this happened, that happened. Wasn't this fucking great? That was fantastic. <laughs> so, so did this, and did you see when they said that, I can, that was inspirational? What a fantastic decision that was. That was you know, that they made there, or it's really good to see this. This is really positive. Well, just once. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we'd find something to fucking whinge about, but, you know. Yeah, um, you'd rather, you'd rather scratch around for stuff to be negative about rather than having it. I mean, I'm sure if we look hard enough, even at the minute, there are plenty of good news stories around, but mm -hmm. um, maybe, you know, maybe we should try and find one or two. I'll uh, balance like, it out. Yeah, maybe a little bit. God, you okay. know, it's it's hard. Like it feels oh, like are we God. actually are we just being negative, or are we just? Is it just an accurate assessment of the situation we're in? I personally think it's accurate because I think if we were being overly negative, we wouldn't we wouldn't be laughing about it. We wouldn't be, um, you know, we wouldn't be trying to turn it into a into an amusing situation. You have to laugh Maybe because it's so bad. Yeah, but we're just laughing so that we don't cry. Maybe that. Yeah. I think it is. It, it's it's particular. I think you know what? Out of all of this bollocks about apparently what it is to be British, one of the things we do fucking well is sarcastic and ironic, you know, um, self degradation. So oh, yeah. we're, we're we're able to laugh at ourselves better than most countries. Not the gammon, obviously, but you know, the majority of us, we we're able to poke fun at ourselves. We laugh at our government. We laugh at our institutions we laugh at the things that we enjoy and we can be really scathing and uh, ironic and sarcastic about stuff because it helps us get through because otherwise you know we'd just be horribly miserable and rounding on each other all the time and you know just to just to make it even more positive the one thing you know that won't happen after this catastrophic in their own words catastrophic data error the one thing that won't happen is the minister won't lose his job we know it won't happen because ministers have done things that would have brought down governments before in the last three or four years alone and all of them just retain their jobs because they're loyal to boris johnson and boris johnson's in charge of the government and he won't sack anyone who he thinks is up his arsehole so matt hancock is safe until matt hancock comes out on the air and says no deal Brexit is unacceptable or Boris Johnson has completely mismanaged the situation, then he'll continue to be health secretary. So, you know, by all means, bend him over a chair and whip him with some birch branches. But until, you know, until, until the flesh is raw and bleeding, but Matt Hancock will still be the health secretary next year, still be making the same blunders and gaffes and the same corrupt contracts being handed out uh, for test and trace that still won't work and we'll still shake our heads and be like why is the government so incompetent and then you look back and go oh right it's because johnson was a clown and we elected a clown and we got a circus but there you go mike anything to add before no. the inevitable catastrophe of next week when something new will crop up no do you know what i think we i think we've covered the, the uh the bits we needed to cover and i think the only thing left to say is you know get your ass to mars and it's <laughs> fucked try another one yeah any get well messages for a 
certain um, public figure, president maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we have been Lena Large and hopefully you're laughing as well because you have to laugh and you're crying. And we will grow you, uh, by the way, like and share please. Because you know we, oh yeah, we you know we we we've got vanity as well. You know we're not quite on Donald Trump level, but we need we need some love and recognition, please. And we will grow you next week. <laughs>